Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to um, SACAP's Online Open Day. I am your host, Disan Makhelpo, and I am an online mentor in the online campus. Um, today's on Open Day program will include learning more about the study of applied psychology, management, and leadership at SACAP. Our admissions team will share information on our available programs, the application process, and our payment options. And as well as our work integrated learning team will will take you through the practical component of some of our programs. And lastly, we'll show you um, what our online learning platform looks like. Um, just a few house rules before we can proceed. Okay, and you will see, you'll notice from my screen, um, we will have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So please do send us your questions in the Q&A box, as you can see the arrow pointing towards um, in the screen. And we are also aware that there is high internet usage in the country, um, which is slowing down connection in some areas. We, will also, we also know that load shedding might take place at any moment. And should you or any of our panelists, um, you know, be cut off due to this, um, kindly note that the recordings will be made available on our social media um, channels before the end of the week, and we will provide you with the links in the chat box towards the end of the session. All right, so please also be also advised that we are still like working from home. So if you hear an occasional microwave beep or a child screaming in the background, we do apologize in advance. Um, so without wasting any, any of your time, I'll start by giving you an overview of our campus locations as we move right along to the next slide. Okay, so we do have like four, um, four physical campuses by one, which is the Cape Town campus, our Johannesburg campus, um, the Pretoria campus, as well as the Durban campus. And then also in the online, in the online campus, we do have the two um, study options of which we have the online live and the online flexi within the online campus. Um, and just to just a reminder that if you want to study or you wish to study in any of our four physical campuses, you should apply um, to, to that campus at SACAP, like as, as SACAP has made the decision um, to start the term one online. But it's important that you keep obviously to that specific campus for the if you wish to, to study in the physical campuses. And then now I'll hand over uh, to Melissa, who will let you know or tell you a bit more about SACAP's learning approach. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Um, and good evening, everyone. My name is Melissa Stemmers, and I am the teaching and learning coordinator for the online campus. Um, so to start with today, I would like to take you through SACAP's approach to learning, as well as what Lisanda mentioned earlier on the two study options that we have available on the online campus. This particular portion is quite important as your teaching and learning experience will most likely be one of the most, experience, the most important experiences you have at SACAP. So as you saw in the previous slide, we have established national campuses in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Pretoria, and Durban, as well as a fully fledged online campus. It's important to note that SACAP has a number of principles that speak into our learning approach, and that this approach is going to be the same no matter which campus you study on. So whether it be our physical campuses or our online campus. The first thing that I'd like to go through is that is to mention that we have a student centered approach to learning. And what this means is that as adult learners, students have a responsibility to ensure that they are engaging in their studies. This engagement would be with your peers and your educators, as well as the content that we have available. We place a high premium on engagement and this is shown in a focus on module engagement. At the center, in, secondly, at the center of every module is an expert educator who will facilitate your learning journey for you. Your educator is there to guide you through an interactive learning experience, to support you academically and to guide you through your learning journey. Along with your educators, we have other support structures also available to students as well. And you will hear more about these later on in the open day. Fourthly, we understand that some students have life commitments and may be juggling other obligations while studying at the same time. 
This could include family commitments and full-time jobs. Therefore, we've designed a learning journey that allows you to be flexible while still remaining within a structured termly process. We believe in peer support and we therefore encourage students to build a learning community within your class. So this would be with your peers and with your educators. And finally, but most importantly, we pride ourselves on academic excellence. All of our modules consist of quality reading material, as well as academic assessments that will form part of your final grade for each module. These assessments usually take the form of essays, case studies, and group projects, just to name a few. So moving on to SACAP's personal study options. As mentioned before, SACAP has two different modes of learning, namely face-to-face -face and online. Within the online campus specifically, we have two different study options. The first option is one that we call online flexi. It's an engaging, active and collaborative learning experience that gives students the independence to meet their weekly course requirements at a time, place and pace that suits them best. Our flexi option is largely what we in the academic sphere call asynchronous, which means that students will have a week to complete all weekly learning activities set out as and when they can within that week. This particular option is ideal for students who have personal and professional commitments and need a flexible approach to their studies. Our online live option is a hybrid approach to online learning that combines weekly real-time virtual class engagement with self-paced online learning resources and activities. Students will have 90-minute webinars that they will have to attend at set times, and this will be complemented with a learning activity. This particular option is ideal for students who want the flexibility of online learning alongside structured real-time engagement with their classmates and their educators. And then finally, just to touch on our on-campus option, this is structured in the form of a fixed class schedule and immediate face-to-face -face interaction with your classmates and educators within a small and social class environment. On-campus students will also benefit from a blended approach to learning, which includes complementary online learning resources and activities. This option is naturally ideal for students who enjoy a social environment and who want the structured engagement of in-person learning. So moving on to your online learning experience. So what would you need in your toolkit to study at SACAP? Firstly, if you are wanting to study on the online campus and face-to-face -face campuses as well, you will need a reliable internet connection. You will need to be familiar with accessing and watching video content online and working with PDF documents. And you'll also need to be familiar with Microsoft Word and other packages. Each week, you will receive your reading materials for that week and your learning activity that will be designed for you by your educator. And then lastly, your modules will include academic assessments. These are usually two per module which contribute to your final grade. And as mentioned earlier, these could take the form of essays, case studies, and group projects, just to name a few. We don't focus too much on examinations in the traditional sense at SACAP, but rather where a module is examinable, we make use of open book assessments. And then lastly, just my taking you through my SACAP. At SACAP, we make use of digital technology to aid our teaching and learning process. We call this technology My SACAP, and it's the primary space where you will be interacting. You will use My SACAP to access all your material, to hand in assessments, and to interact with your peers and your educators. Shortly, Lisanda will be taking you on a virtual tour of My SACAP. 
Thank you very much. And I'll now hand you back to our host, Lysander. Um, thank you, Melissa, for that um, information. And as we, as Melissa did mention that now we'll go into a live um, session about like obviously how my setup looks like in real time. And I'll just quickly share my screen if you can just give me two minutes or two seconds. Thank you. Okay. So this is the MySeka platform and you might see that it looks a bit different from my side because I've actually went into a classroom. So as in the previous slide, you'll notice that it was a like the MySeka homepage, the platform that we use for our learning um, for all of our students. And as you notice in this class, like with every, if, for example, if you are registered as a student at SACA, you will have like the different classes as pertaining to what program that you're doing and how many of those modules you will take in that specific term and one of them being this is academic literacy one of our first year um, modules um, that are likely that you'll do should you be in the higher certificate or the BF SOC SI um, and with the higher certificate you'll notice sorry with this um, course or this academic literacy um, module you'll notice that even from the beginning of the module it does say academic literacy and it has the the name of the educator in there and you'll notice over on this part where it, it, where it says 25 enrolled students. So because at SACAB, we, the maximum number of students that can be part of a class is a maximum of, of 25 students. And, um, and you'll notice here, even on the left-hand side of my screen as I'm hovering over, you'll notice that you can click on the part where it says participants, and then you get to know other students in your class because it will give you all their names of all the other students that, are, that you are part of in their class. And as well as you'll notice even here, like there's like the general mo module announcements for this specific module. So it will be the same as with all the other modules that you'll be doing, as well as like the module outline of which that is what our students use um, in, in terms of like to carry, out the, to carry out their studies throughout the term because it guides them on what is expected on a week by week basis. And, and, you, and you'll notice there's a video, like the, the module introduction. These, these are just some of the things that you have in your classroom. And, and just going further down, like you'll notice on a week by week basis, like you will have like the learning resources that are available for you um, in that specific week. So as we run on a 10 week structure, so each and every week you will have have like the learning outcome obviously that is guided also by your module outline because your module outline it tells you what to expect in that specific week and these are just some of the expectations that you can like obviously look forward to when you enroll with us at SACAP and um, I hope that um, you know this is much more exciting as you can see that even when going down further like your week two will come but even the classes they open when the actual week is actually starting and so forth but this is just how the structure of our overall classes will look like on your my SACAP once you are registered as a student and this is something that um, you know you can look forward to of course with the guidance of us as the online mentors all right, I'm just gonna move back to the presentation um, and then we can just continue. All right, so as I did mention like earlier on, like with us as the online mentors that we are student support in a sense that we provide our students with academic support. Academic support may comprise anything um, including like, you know, um, academic counseling sessions, like, you know, for our students that may struggle with things like APA and so forth. We do run workshops on a term on term basis that assist students to actually, you know, to win on their studies and to know exactly what is expected from them. And as well as we do provide administrative support. Um, so for all the students administrative needs, it can be asking for an assessment extension, or be it you like it is it's something that happens with your studies or something happened personally and you can't continue with your studies that's why we're there for for that academic um, support as well as student wellness we do have like um, resources that are available within um, each of our campuses you know with our student registered counselors that are available to assist students should they be hampered emotionally whilst they're busy with their studies so there is help available and also a program called a peer assisted learning program so this program is basically our 
current students that are performing very well academically. So they offer their time um, to assist other students to do better in their studies. So should it happen that maybe you struggle with two or three modules or you struggle with assessment structure, you're not sure how things go or whatsoever. So there are other students that, you know, that do assist within their own time. Of course, they are, they are working their parents, but they also students that are A students, they're getting like 75% and above for their grades um, in their assessments, but they also still do give that time to assist other students and so forth. So this is just basically the, the student support within the online campus. Um, and as I just move right along to the next slide, and, um, and just moving right along to SACAP's accreditation and recognition. Um, in that SACAP is a, is a leading accredited and independent provider of education in applied psychology, management and leadership, and offers learners a range of accredited degrees, diplomas and certificate programs. Um, and also SACAP is registered as a private higher education institution and registered with the Department of Higher Education and Training, in other words, the DHET. And SACAP's qualifications are accredited by the Council of Higher Education, also known as the CHE, and registered on the National Qualifications Framework, in other words, the NQF, by the South African Qualifications Authority, um, also known as SACWA. And our professional psychology programs, which is the B-Psych and the B-Psych equivalent, are professionally endorsed by the Health Professions Council of South Africa, also known as the HPCSA, and leads to the professional registration of registered counselors. We also have an associate membership with Comensa for all our coaching programs. Okay, and as we just move right along to some of what you, what, um, what you can study at SACAP, um, obviously, you will be able to study um, psychology, um, counseling and communication, uh, management and leadership, uh, social work and um, and community development, um, as well as uh, as well as coaching. And our applied psychology uh, management and leadership uh, program is available um, are available in the following categories, of which it's these: um, the psychology, the counseling, communication, and the management leadership. Okay. And then now I'll hand over uh, to Samantha, who is the admissions um, officer, that will take you through some of our available programs in the online campus. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Lysandra. Hi, everyone. Um, I'll just be taking you through some of the qualifications that are offered online specifically um, and just briefly um, take you through it. And if, if you have any questions, just um, drop it in the Q&A box and we'll, I'll answer it for you. Um, I'll start off with the higher certificate in counseling and communication skills. Um, this program is a one-year full-time and two years part-time program that offers you an introduction to, to communication and psychology. Um, the higher certificate, you basically will gain skills in academic literacy, in interpersonal skills and basic counseling skills. Um, and it will prepare you for higher education. Um, it also gives people access to um, higher education where somebody passed metric um, with a high certificate, but they wanted to do a degree. Um, you can then study this high certificate and then build on um, as a bridging course um, to do the degree. And the, the minimum entry requirements here is a high certificate pass in your metric or senior certificate pass. Um, and as I mentioned, one year full-time and two years part-time. We'll then move over to the Diploma in Counseling and Communication Skills. This is a two-year full-time program and three years part-time program. And it's this a vocational program offers and emphasizes, sorry, on counseling and communication skills. It is accredited with the professional body um, ACCHP, which is the Association for Supportive Counselors and Holistic Practitioners, okay? With this accreditation, um, graduates could register as a holistic or a lay counsellor, which is basically like support counselling. Um, the diploma offers you 200 practical hours um, in your work integrated learning module, and you will then be qualified to counsel under supervision. It is offered two years part, two years full time, and three years part time. And the minimum entry requirements here is a diploma pass in your matric. 
um, or if you have a NQF level five qualification. Then we'll move on to the Bachelors of Applied Social Science. So as you can see here, the Bachelor of Applied Social Science has three streams or specializations. Um, and I'll briefly take you through all of them. Um, but just to note for all of these um, specializations, the minimum entry requirement here is the bachelor's pass in your matric or matric exemption um, with English above 45%. Or if you have a previous NQF level five qualification um, that you've maybe done like a higher certificate, um, you'll be able to apply for this qualification. So if you look at the Bachelor of Applied Social Science in Psychology and Counseling, Students will develop critical thinking skills and understand psychology, mental health, and human behavior in a social context. You will also receive 200 practical hours, which you will complete during the end of your course. Um, and you will be able to pursue honors in um, psychology, the social science, or any related um, field. Graduates will also quali be qualified to counsel under supervision after they've completed this degree. Um, it's offered full-time three years and part-time five years. The Bachelor of Applied Social Science, um, Psychology and Human Resource Management. The specialization focuses on psychology and human resource management. So these are two majors. Um, so once you've completed this qualification, you'll then be able to either choose a field in psychology for your honors, if you wish to continue with postgraduate studies or you would then either continue with uh, human resource management, um, which, is, which is amazing. Um, it's aimed at those looking to work in the human resource environment, um, organizational development, employee wellness, um, macro and um, micro business environments, labor law um, and labor relations. Um, the degree offers a three month work integrated learning a module which will um, assist you in, 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 in gaining experience in the corporate um, environment um, where you can learn how it works in the field that you want to eventually um, go into. Um, and then graduates, um, yeah, as I mentioned, will be able to either go into honors in human resource management or um, psychology. And this is only available five years online part-time. The Bachelor of Psychology and Business Management, um, this is a powerful blend of people and traditional business skills. So here we'll look at psychology and the business environment, um, looking at um, business skills, entrepreneurship, um, a, you know, improving, improving your business and using psychology uh, to assist you in that um, so you could either do an honors or postgraduate studies in psychology or business management. So it's similar to that of the human resource management, um, which gives you um, a variety of options um, that you can look at or that you might be interested in. Um, this program is only available five years part-time as well online. Okay, we can go to the next slide. We'll look at the honors qualifications. Um, firstly, we look at the the Bachelor of Social Science Honours Degree in Psychology. This program is offered 18 months part-time. Um, the minimum entry requirements here is an undergraduate degree um, in, and your, we will look at your third year psychology modules and you'll need an average of 65% and above. Um, this program provides students with competencies in dependent research, reporting, as well as self-managed learning, which adequately prepares you for a master's in psychology, if that's also um, one of your um, goals in life. Um, at open avenues of employment in community mental health, applied psychology, organizational development, research, social development, um, and yeah, it's a very, it's, it's a very good honours um, qualification, which is um, an academic theory-based honours. Um, yeah, so that program is offered part-time, 18 months only. And just to mention that we are closed for this honours program specifically for 2021. The Bachelor of Social Science Honours Degree in Human Resource Management. Um, so this one, obviously, this honours program looks at those aiming towards a 
uh, a career in human resource management um, as a practitioner, um, HR assistant, um, business HR business partner, generalist, um, consulting. Um, it's on an NQF level eight honors level, um, and you can also, you know, look and be looking to study a human resource management masters once you've completed this program. It's also offered 18 months part-time only online and the minimum entry requirements here is a 65% average for all your third year human resource management modules or industrial organizational modules um, if you have an undergraduate in uh, human resource management or industrial um, psychology. Okay, moving on to the next slide. I'll briefly um, take you through um, the coaching programs. Um, just to note that this um, applications are open for the coaching programs, which starts in um, May. Um, so I'll just briefly take you through it. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can just pop it in the, in the Q&A box. Um, so the coaching programs are offered as blended learning options for 2021 consisting of online evening classes once a week and face-to-face four-day intensives modules and online learning modules for the postgraduate diploma in coaching, which I will take you through. Our coaching programs are designed for in working individuals and only available part-time. The next intake, as I mentioned, is in May, in May 2021 and applications are open. And all coaching programs are accredited by the International Coaching Federation and COMENSA. The Coach Practitioner Program is a five-month short learning program. Okay, It provides you an excellent foundation in coaching and aims to introduce you, introduce students to fundamental coaching competencies. Um, the Coach Practitioner Program is accredited by ICF and COMENSA and it leads to credentialing with ICF at, the, at entry level um, as an associate certified coach. And the minimum entry requirements here is, is three years relevant work experience or any work experience that you might have. Um, the Advanced Coach Practitioner Program, this is a six month short learning program. This program builds onto the Coach Practitioner Program. So you'll have to complete the Coach Practitioner Program in order to apply for the Advanced Program. Um, it enables students to expand the application of the coaching module, models and tools to further assist in, in personal coaching and executive coaching. Um, it includes ethics, values, and diversity in coaching and deepens your ethical understanding of the coaching practice. Um, it also offers an introduction to group and team coaching. And the Advanced Coach Practitioner Program um, leads to credentialing with the ICF as a professional certified coach. And as I mentioned, you would require to complete the coach practitioner program to apply for the advanced program. Moving on to the postgraduate diploma in coaching. Okay, so this is our honors level qualification. It's on an NQF level eight. Um, so it is registered with SACWA. Um, this is a qualification that for students who want to uh, master the coaching model. Um, you, with this program, students will harness the signature presence as a coach, create, create their own coaching model, and explore how to implement practice um, practitioner research. It also includes a six-month um, supervised client coaching internship and a research paper. Um, it leads to credentialing with the ICF as a professional certified coach. Um, yeah, so the minimum entry requirements here is an undergraduate degree because it is on an NQF level 8, you will require, require a undergraduate which is an NQF level 7 um, or equivalent qualification. And then lastly, the coach, coaching in the workplace short course. This is an introduct, introductory 12 week online short course aimed at managers and supervisors who want to um, gain coaching skills and um, looking to implement coaching in the teams and improve um, team morale, um, want to improve performance in the workplace. Um, it's a short course, it's only 12 weeks long. Um, and with the short course, it includes 30 hours of ICF accredited coaching, specific training hours, 
which counts towards credentialing with ICF. And the minimum entry requirements here is three years working experience in a supervisory management or leadership position. Um, the next intake for this program is in September 2021. Um, however, if um, the short course is offered all year round for corporate contracts, um, but for individuals who want to apply, it's only offered in September 2021. Okay. And finally, I'll just take you through the um, application process. Okay. So our application process is quite easy. Um, if you want to inquire, if more questions you want to ask, um, you can look on our website. Um, you can make an appointment with an admissions officer. We have um, online bookings, consultations, either virtual or phone consultations, where we sit with you, chat with you, and guide you through um, what, what you want to do or where you want to go. Um, and then if you're ready, you can apply. Um, yeah, so the documents you require depends on the on the qualification that you're applying for. Um, so that will all be on the application. We will leave the, the link to the application um, in the Q&A box um, so you can apply as soon as possible. Um, and then after you apply, we'll, we'll send you an uh, uh, acceptance letter if you qualify. And then you'll have to finalize your registration by paying um, your, your registration fee and then finalizing your payment plan. So the payment plans are as follows. Um, you can either do an upfront payment where you will receive 5% discount, term payment or debit order form. So you will receive a performer invoice with your, with your outcome letter if you are successful and this will give you the, the payment plans as well. So applications are still open for most of our programs that are offered um, that you've seen. Um, so if you are ready to apply, go ahead and do so because term is term starting soon and we look forward to welcoming you as part of SACAP student body. Thank you. I'll now hand over to Natlantla who will take you through to our work in debate learning. Okay, wonderful. Um, thank you so much, Samantha. Um, a good evening to all of you and a warm welcome to all of you. My name is Ntlantla Zamini and I'm a will and practicum coordinator on the Johannesburg campus. I'm also a registered counselor with the Health Professions Council of South Africa by profession. Today, I'll be sharing a little about SACAP's Work Integrated Learning or World Program with you all. So after countless hours of studying and years of, dream, of dreaming of being the change, you can finally put theory into practice through the Work Integrated Learning Program. World is rewarding and is the perfect opportunity to apply the knowledge you've learned in class within a real world placement site. It truly gives many students the opportunity to create change by leaving a giant footprint on the hearts of others in a variety of professional settings. <clears throat> An important aspect of Will is ensuring that all our students feel guided and supported on their journey. This is why all Will students receive a guardian angel also known as your supervisors and mentors. Work Integrated Learning provides you with the following, valuable and practical experience before you graduate, an opportunity to make a positive impact in the South African communities, counselor aptitude and ethical awareness, the confidence to enter into the workplace, and finally, the chance to develop in a particular learning field. As we move on to the next slides, I will introduce to you the SACAPS program that offer this wonderful world experience. The first qualification that we have online that offers this experience is a diploma in counseling and communication skills, followed by the Bachelor of Applied Social Sciences degree, <clears throat> sorry, majoring in psychology and counseling, and also our Bachelor of Applied Social Science degree, majoring in psychology and business management. <clears throat> And then also our qualification, which in terms of the Bachelor of Applied Social, Sci Social Science degree, majoring in psychology and human resource management. And then finally, the postgrad diploma in coaching. Should you have any queries with regards to the World Program, please feel free to pop the question um, in the Q&A box. Thank you for your time. I'll now hand over to our host, Lysander. 
Uh, thank you, Ntlandla. Um, thank you to our team for sharing that information. And as Ntlandla did mention that if you have any questions, um, please pop them in the question box below, as you see from, the, from your screen. And uh, for our answer, uh, for our live answer session that will be happening shortly. Um, and as we just obviously dive straight into it. So I'll just go straight to the Q&A box and just... Um, and just go through some of the questions. So feel free to pop in your question if you have not done so. So I see the first question is from Siona. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Um, Siona is asking um, the honors degree, when you said to apply for it, we need to get the average 65%. Do you, are you referring to psych modules or um, all the modules of the third year undergraduate degree? And I'm gonna hand this over to you, Samantha, thank you. Hi, Siona. So the honours degree, you will require 65% or above in your third year psychology modules. Okay. Um, so that is what we look at. And obviously, there are more um, documents that you'll need to submit. But in terms of marks and academic uh, marks, we'll look at your third year psychology modules. Um, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, okay. Siona asked another question. Um, um, is asking, I'm sorry, so is this the program um, Bachelor of Social Science Honours in Psychology, it brackets the B-Cycle equivalent program available through online as, um, as well as the campus. Um, um, Melissa, I'm going to hand over this question to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lisanda. Um, hi, Siona. So the Bachelor of Social Science Honours degree, the BSEC equivalent program, which is the one that you are particularly talking about, is not offered online. And the reason for that is because, as mentioned previously, it is, um, you know, accredited with the HPCSA, the Health Professions Council of South Africa. And because it is a professional program, they request that students, um, you know, do study that face to face. So the BSEC equivalence program is not offered online. Uh, thank you, Melissa, for that. Um, Solomon is asking, um, kindly provide a breakdown of the fee structure. And Sam, if you can just elaborate on that. Thank you. Okay, so what I would recommend is if you just um, leave your details and we will email you um, the fee structure so you can see the breakdown um, for all the courses and as well as um, the, the different payment options. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, and then um, Kay Dean is asking, can I please get a breakdown of what human resource management is all about? Um, and Sam, this is the question to you as well. So, um, would you, I just need to confirm if you would need like um, the information, like the modules that we can send through to you. Um, yeah, if you can just confirm that, but in terms of human resource management, um, it looks at, looked at, looks at um, employee wellness, organizational development, um, how you can improve, um, how you can improve situations in the workplace, um, looking, at, um, looking at your employees and what you can do to make um, things better for them. And also if you add psychology to it, um, it also gives you a little bit of um, boost in terms of knowing people and knowing how um, not their brains work, but knowing why they act the way they do. Um, but this will take place obviously in the workplace, in the corporate environment or setting. Um, thank you for that, um, Sam. Okay, um, so as we just go, sorry, further up. Uh, okay, so Taryn was asking, how can I arrange for a career um, guidance, please? Um, so if I can just answer that, um, Taryn, you can leave your details um, in the chat box um, at the end of the session and our admissions um, personnel will be in contact with you and with all your questions that you have. Thank you. And then I'll just um, go to Kate Dean's question is asking, will, will you still have live Zoom calls um, with the class and lecture when you choose online Flexi? And I'm gonna hand this over to you, Melissa. Uh, thanks, uh, Lisanda. And so, Kadeen, with the online flexi option, there are no compulsory set scheduled webinars. You may have 
a webinar or two throughout the term with your educator, but these are not set or scheduled. It will be decided by the educator um, and the, the students in the class. Um, it will only be on online live where you will have live set webinars each week. Uh, thank you for that, Melissa. And Mocha Behadi, oh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, is asking, uh, when you talk of practicals, how does that go as in, in what do we do in practicals and how do we get them done if we're not in campus? Um, Dantla, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lysander, and thank you for that wonderful question. When we speak about practicals, we specifically speak about the work integrated learning module, where students are given the opportunity to go into the field as psychosocial support workers. Um, these are fields or these are placement sites that offer counseling, social support, and students, like I said, have to go there for 100 hours and complete those hours under supervision from a SACAP um, supervisor. It's very interesting how we've, I think it's for the past seven or six to seven years now that we've ran the World Program successfully online, where students really are afforded an opportunity to go into a placement site that is closer to the area of residence. As we're well aware that um, you could be studying from anywhere in South Africa as a online student. So we've had relationships with many, many, many sites across the country. Um, however, for that, you would have to speak to your world coordinator who will, will be able to guide you appropriately in terms of the site and finding the site where you can um, have these 100 hours held. Um, and that will be the kind of support that we will have for you. Thanks, Lysander. Uh, thank you, Ntlandla, for that. Um, the next on my list is Nicolette. Um, Nicolette is asking, uh, please assist which qualification is available um, full time. Um, Sam, Samantha, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you. Okay, so the qualifications available full time online is the higher certificate, um, the diploma, the Bachelor of Applied Social Science in Counseling and Communication Skills. So those are the programs that are offered um, full time, full time and part time on the online space. Okay, thank you, Sam. While I have you on the line, I do have a couple of questions that are that will need yes. your assistance, please. Uh, Anastasia or Anastasia is asking, hi, um, when is the closing date um, this year for applications? So for term one, 2021, which is starting on the 1st of March, the application closing date is the 28th of February. But I do recommend um, completing your application as soon as possible, um, just so that you can, like, um, be part of orientation, which was starting next week um, and just the register before the 1st of, of March. So you can get yourself sorted before you start classes. Uh, thank you, Sam. And then the other question is from Caleb. Um, Caleb is asking, is the Bachelor of Social Science Honours degree in psychology online? So it is available, the Bachelor of Social Science Honours is available online part-time only for 18 months. Thank you for that, Sam. And um, I have the next question um, here. It's from Agon. Agon is asking, uh, does the BAPSOCSI honors meet the requirements to study neuropsychology at a master's level? So the Bachelor of Applied Social Science and the honors. So if you complete the Bachelor of Applied Social Science and you do qualify to continue with your honors, um, and then complete your honours, you will be able to continue with a master's um, program, um, providing you meet the minimum entry requirements. Um, if, if you apply at SACAP or if you apply somewhere else for your master's, you'll have to meet the requirements. Um, but it does, leads to a, it does lead to a master's. Um, uh, you just have to meet the requirements for the programs. Okay, um, thank you for that, um, Samantha. I do have just another question from Carice. If it's Carice. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Um, Carice is asking um, if they obtain either a degree or a diploma. Uh, for example, if they do a bachelor in psychology in undergrad, um, will they be able to, you know, to apply for a postgrad in another university? Specifically, they mentioning, um, you know, the University of, 
I think Stellenbosch, for example, yes. as because this is a college and do I still obtain the same bachelor's degree um, or is it a bit, you know, a lower grade? It's definitely not a lower grade qualification. It's on the same NQF level. Um, it's it's um, accredited with SACWA. Um, your degree will be on an NQF level seven, so it meets the standards of applying for an honours degree. Um, if you apply at SACAP, if you apply elsewhere, um, you have a very good qualification. You will have a very good qualification um, in your pocket. Um, so it's not a lower grade. It won't be a lower grade qualification. Um, yeah, so it is accredited, so you don't have to worry, worry about that. Yeah, okay. And also another one from Cariz. Um, she's asking that, do you offer postgrad and masters um, or only undergrad? Okay, in, in psychology specific, we have the honours in psychology, which I mentioned be, before. And our master's program is only offered on campus. So it's a master's of social science in community mental health promotion. So that is the master's um, that we offer, but in terms of the honors in psychology, yes, we have the postgrad um, and as well as the undergrad programs as well. Okay, uh, thank you for that, Haris. Um, Karis, sorry, and then Muhabi Hadi. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. I apologize, uh, but is asking if, for instance, I'm studying for a bachelor of social science, psychology, and counseling, and I want to switch to a much um, better and advanced course. Is it possible to change my course to another one once I'm done with my current course? Okay, so um, it's obviously depending on the requirements, um, if you meet minimum entry requirements. Uh, for example, if you apply to study a higher certificate and you only have a higher certificate pass, you won't be able to apply for a diploma. You'll have to complete the higher certificate and then apply for the diploma afterwards. Um, so it depends on your requirements and if you meet those requirements. Um, if you want to apply for a degree but you don't qualify, you'll have to complete a higher certificate or a diploma to study a degree. Um, so you'll have to look at the entry requirements and see what you qualify for and apply for that and start with that program um, and finish it and then continue with the next program. Okay. Um, thank you about that. Um, thank you for that, Sam. Um, the other question is from Signed. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing this correctly. Your name, apologies. Uh, but Signed is asking regarding the PGDC. Um, the PGDC um, is any bachelor's degree sufficient for entry and regardless of marks obtained. Um, that's the question for you, Samantha. Thank you. Okay, so with the postgraduate diploma in coaching, you will require your NQF level seven. Okay, um, so the, the process with, uh, with this, these applications, there will be a program fit um, sort of interview um, session um, where you also have to submit like your CV, um, any other um, qualifications that you've done. But in terms of the, the degree itself, we would just require. Um, a completed NQF level seven qualification. All right. Um, thank you for that, um, Sam, and thank you for all the answers. And um, just the next um, question is from Agon, is asking in the online flexi, what does um, contact time with lecturers and mentors look like? Um, are they face-to-face -face Zoom calls, which can be um, scheduled? Um, Melissa, this is a question for you. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much for your question, Argon. In the online flexi mode of learning, your contact time is not necessarily going to be a face-to-face -face live Zoom, um, you know, kind of contact session. It more likely will take the form of discussion forums. So where your educator will develop a learning activity, place it on my SACAP, which is the system that we showed you, and ask you to then interact with that learning activity. So it might be a discussion forum, it might be a quiz, it might be, you know, kind of using one of our other technologies that we make use of to interact with media. Um, it might also be a Zoom call. A 
the online mentors that will be, you know, when you want to contact the online mentors, you would then be able to email them and they would respond via email. Um, so, yeah, so it's not necessarily going to be a face-to-face -face Zoom call. Um, thank you for that, Melissa. Um, Tlantla, the next set of questions are for you, please. Um, Caleb is asking, um, is asking, does Will start from first year? Okay. Um, thanks, um, Lysander and um, Caleb. So Will depends on the qualification that you are studying towards. So for an example, if you are studying towards the Diploma in Counseling and Communication Skills, your will, pro, your will module will begin in your second year. However, if you're studying towards your Bachelor of Applied Social Sciences, it will start in your third year. So it depends on which qualification you're on. But I think the admission department, once you're enrolled, will be able to help you in terms of providing you with the study plan so that you can be able to see which modules are you up, which modules are you scheduled to do um, as you progress toward, towards um, your qualification. Um, thank you, Ntlantla. Um, here's another one from Agon. Agon is asking, are there, are there opportunities for students to get involved in the counseling hub? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm glad that you are aware that um, there's a counseling hub because it's one of our babies. But counseling hub is one of our practic practical sites that are associated with us or our partner sites. So definitely students can get the opportunity to go and complete their will at the counseling hub. So we try as best as we can to allocate students with their interest in terms of their placement sites. So students can let us know if they're interested in working with children, working with adults, and we, um, together with the world coordinator, will be able to allocate a suitable um, placement site for the students um, as according to, yes, the availability of the site, um, the distance of the site, and obviously the interest that the student shows to that particular site. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ntlantla. Um, I see there is a question from um, Silveria, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, you're asking that I logged on to my SACAB and it does not show the courses yet. When is it going to show? Um, so once um, at, at, at the beginning of each term, so you'll notice like with, with our studies or with, with, all, with all of our campuses. So once you are registered at SACAB or as you will be a current student, I'm assuming you are already registered. So the material is only released on my SACAB a week before the start of term. So if you are already registered, that as a student, you can expect to receive your material by next week. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, and then I'm just going to go through um, some of the questions that I haven't gone through as yet. Um, okay, so Jolene is asking, um, hi, I have a grade 12 certificate. Um, I have done two, um, two, two 10 week courses with Get Smarter. Um, can I study counseling or social um, work part-time? Um, Sam, that's a, a question for you, thank you. Okay, so um, Janine, we'll have to see what you passed your matric with. So on your matric certificate, it will usually tell you you have a high certificate pass, you have a diploma pass, or you have a bachelor's pass. So it depends on what you um, what you passed your matric with. So if you have a higher certificate pass, you can apply for the higher certificate. Um, and if you have a Diploma, bachelor's, you can apply for diploma and bachelor's. The social work, however, is only offered full-time on campus. Um, so you won't be able to do that part-time, but our counseling and psychology courses, you will be able to study part-time. Thank you. Um, thank you for that, Sam. Um, I think we can look, take a, a bit of more um, questions before our time um, obviously lapses. Um, so I'm just gonna go through. Um, okay, so um, Siona is asking, um, okay, when does application for honors degree for 2022 opens and closes? Um, Samantha, if you can answer that for us, please. 
Um, so applications usually open around um, July or August. So you'll just have to keep a lookout on our website as to when applications will open for the honors. Um, yeah, so it usually close, opens that time and then closes around October um, or November. You just have to see, see the specific dates on the website when it does open. It will give the opening date um, and the closing date as well. So, but look out for July, August, uh, keep an eye on the website. Um, okay, thank you, Sam. And just the one last question we can take or we can answer from Jonathan. Jonathan is asking, um, can I do any of the coaching coaching programs while I am doing a higher certificate? Okay, so um, I'm not sure if it's a higher certificate at um, SACAP, um, but it is a recommendation that you, if you are studying at SACAP um, to do one specific course, um, because it is quite um, demanding of you. Um, so the higher certificate for example, it's a one year full-time program and you'll have to dedicate one year full-time to that program. Um, and the coaching comes in in May, um, which will then be a different course that you'll be studying, and which is also very demanding. Um, it is a part-time course. It's, it's during the evenings. Um, so it's, it would be best to focus on one qualification and complete it and then build on to those qualifications um, just so that you, you are successful in both of them. Um, and that you, you meet your goals and your demands for yourself um, once you've completed them. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Samantha, for that. And just one last question that we can just squeeze in before we can close the session is from Muishani or Muishane. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but is asking, good evening. I'm going to study BF Soxi in psychology and counseling online. Will I be able to do um, an honors in psychology or can I do the psychology honors equivalent? Um, Melissa, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think it's it's best to just clarify um, the differences between these two. So the Bachelor of Social Sciences um, in Psychology Honours is a purely academic degree, um, whereas the B Psych Equivalence degree is one way that you can do in order to qualify as a registered counsellor at the end. So I think you would just need to decide, um, you know, which one it is you would want to do. So whether you would want to, at the end of the degree, um, qualify as a registered counselor, or whether you would want to just do a purely academic honors degree in psychology. Uh, thank you for that, um, Melissa. And, um, well, that was the last question that we've taken, like we're obviously taking for tonight. And we've come to the end of our live um, Q&A session. But if we did not answer your question or if you'd like our team to contact you, please leave your email address and your query in the chat box and our admissions, like, sorry, our admissions team will be in contact with you. Um, and thank you very much for joining um, our open day and certainly hope that we've made your decision um, to study with us uh, a little bit easier. And we hope to see you next week, obviously, for the orientation. And um, please do also find um, the links to our appointment sessions in the chat box. And um, also just remember to leave your email address in the chat box and our admissions team will be in contact with you if you need further information. And um, also just be reminded that our open day sessions will be available on also on our social media platforms in case you may have missed a few points during the session. Okay, and may everyone have a wonderful evening further. Thank you, everyone.